Hi guys, welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. Tonight is the second recipe in our second seasonal series for the month of December. This one is going to be Christmas holiday themed recipes. So last week we had the Christmas cauliflower casserole and now for the next two weeks I'm going to be focusing on cookie recipes. So our first cookie recipe is going to be keto thumbprint cookies. So come along with me and let's get started. So thumbprint cookies are very traditional for this time of year. They can be made with all different kinds of jam. Um, some people will put chocolate in the center of the thumbprint instead to make almost like blossom cookies, I believe they're called. But when I was growing up, my mom did not bake a great deal, but she's always been a huge cookie lover. And so most of the time when she did bake, it was cookies. And these were a favorite in our family. But this is the first time that I have attempted to make them in a ketogenic fashion. But they are very simple. They have very few ingredients. It is something that you could do with your children or grandchildren. It is a very fun baking experience. And it would be also beautiful for gift giving. So let's get right into it. So to begin our thumbprint cookies, we need to preheat our oven to 375 degrees. In our bowl, we are going to put a half a cup of butter, which is one stick, and it needs to be softened. I'm going to be combining my butter with the sweetener, and I'm going to be using powdered monk fruit erythritol. If you don't have powdered, you can blend up your granular in a food processor or a coffee grinder to make it powdered. And I need two thirds of a cup. And I'm going to tamp that down a little bit with my butter. And actually my butter is not quite soft enough, so I'm going to pop it in the microwave for just a second to soften it. Hopefully that's just a little bit better. I'm just gonna try and work that into my powdered sugar just a bit before I start mixing, just because the powdered sugar is gonna fly up. I'm going to add my extract at this point, and I'm gonna be using almond. You could use vanilla or whatever flavor that you would like. Um, probably corresponding in with what jam you're going to be putting into your thumbprint cookies. I'm going to be using raspberry and I think that raspberry and almond go very well together. So I'm going to be using a teaspoon of that. So I'm just going to put that in. And I'm just going to start with my mixer on low. see that our butter and sweetener have creamed well. Now I'm going to add one room temperature egg and I have let mine sit out for most of the afternoon. You can heat it for about 10 minutes in warm water if you start with a refrigerated egg. going to give that a uh, stir around with my spatula just to make sure everything was well incorporated before we add our dry ingredients. <clears throat> I'm going to be sifting my almond flour just to make sure that it is nice and fine. And you need two cups of almond flour. The 
go ahead and add my leavening in with my flour so that it can all be sifted together. So I need a half a teaspoon of baking powder. Sift that all together into our wet ingredients. I woke up this morning I looked outside my window with children lighting up the Christmas tree And the snow is falling It reminds me of the good times Those winters we would spend just you and me It's been such a long time But tomorrow's Christmas Day And I am on my way I'm coming home for Christmas Yes, I'm coming home to you. Oh, how much I missed you. There's our dry ingredients. I'm also going to add just a pinch of pink Himalayan sea salt. Now I'm just going to give this a quick blitz with my mixer. If you did not want to use your mixer for this recipe, you would not have to if you don't want to get it out, but I went ahead and did it. You could do all of this with just a fork or a spoon. Yes, I'm coming home to you Oh, how much I missed you Wanna spend this day with you Yes, I'm coming home to you okay. So we're going to need a cookie sheet and I have a silicone baking mat on mine. I'm just going to take our batter and once again use my spatula just to make sure everything is combined in the bowl. Now we are going to be making one and a half inch cookie balls with this batter. I have a one and a half um, tablespoon. Now after we roll out our cookie ball, we are going to be, my oven is ready, <laughs> kindly letting me know. We are going to be rolling our cookie balls in crushed nuts. I have um, chopped some of my butter roasted pecans here and that's what I'm going to be using. You could use macadamia nuts, you could use walnuts, you could use almonds. You could totally skip the nuts if you're not a nut fan, but having the coating of the nuts on the outside is very traditional for thumb print cookies. So I'm just going to take my cookie ball a nice round cookie and I'm going to take my plate of nuts and I'm just going to kind of sprinkle the nuts on it kind of roll it around and I'm going to push it on the baking sheet and I'm just going to flatten it ever so slightly So if you don't have a cookie baller, you don't have to use a cookie baller. You could just use a, a teaspoon or a tablespoon. I just find that it makes things nice and even and they're not cost prohibitive and they're readily available. So I like having one actually in multiple sizes if I can. So with thumbprint cookies, you are going to be putting your thumbprint in them, that's how they got their name, and it's going to be filled with jam. So we need to bake these cookies partially before we do that step. 
So these are going to go into our 375 degree oven for eight minutes. Then we're going to remove them from the oven, put our thumbprint in it, fill it with jam, and then they are going to continue to bake for another 10 minutes. So our first step with our prepared cookies that have been rolled in our nuts is eight minutes at 375 degrees. So eight minutes at 375. Okay, so here comes the fun part of making them into thumbprints using your thumb, of course. We want to make an indentation in the cookie, like so, and all the way in each cookie. This would be something enjoyable to do with your children or your grandchildren cookie baking is definitely something that is done this time of year just be careful so I've made an indentation in every cookie now I'm going to be taking sugar-free jam I'm going to be using raspberry sugar-free jam I believe they make strawberry as well or you could of course make your own jam with your own fruit you want to put about a teaspoon in each cookie Easier said than done. It's white outside And the night is cold Everyone's lighting can And as I said before, you could use whatever flavor of jam that you prefer and you would not have to use nuts if you didn't care for nuts. I just think that it adds a pretty festive touch. And I enjoy nuts, especially pecans. They're my favorite. So after we get done dressing these with our jam, we are going to put them back into the oven for 10 minutes. Snow is falling down, all the colored lights lighting up this town. We are going to be cooking these cookies for an additional 10 minutes to set our jam and to finish cooking the inside of the cookie. Now when you remove these from the oven after the 10 minute mark, you have to leave them on the cookie sheet for a full 30 minutes or until they're completely cool because of the shortbread nature of these cookies, they are very delicate, and if you try to remove them before that time, they will indeed fall apart. So it's essential when you remove them that you let them fully cool on the cookie sheet. Do not try and take them off for a full 30 minutes. Okay, in we go for 10 more minutes. We are ready to take our cookies out of the oven. You can see that they're nice and golden brown on the outside and our jam has melted. You can see that the edges got nicely browned on our shortbread and that's what we're looking for. Keep in mind if you do not coat yours with nuts, if you decide to omit the nuts, um, your shortbread might get a little bit more brown than mine has gotten just simply because there won't be any nuts in the way. So, but that will be totally fine, but just as an FYI. So once again, I have removed these from the oven. They have to remain on the cookie sheet until they are completely cooled at least 30 minutes before you can remove them or they will crumble. They are very delicate cookie. But once you let them come to room temperature, they should be hearty enough to use for gift giving. Oh. 
Hi. Hi, CJ. Hi. Welcome to Sarah's Cookie Store. It's the North Pole, and we are making cookies. Okay, wow. <laughs> so these are keto thumbprint cookies, and they are raspberry almond. All right, so these have set overnight. Not that they had to. Mm -hmm. Just 30 minutes. They're good. I like the texture. I wouldn't know that these were anything but thumbprint cookies. Um, I like the almond flavor. I know that can be optional. Yeah. People who use vanilla. I like the addition of the nuts. Uh, kind of roll them in the in the nuts. It kind of gives it a nice crunchy texture. You could use whatever kind of nut you wanted to. Oh, also. I think it'll be good for people to make them with their fam, with their kids or grandkids or whoever. Yes. Yes. Husband or. Because it's easy. You, like I said, you don't even need a hand mixer if you just wanted to use just a spoon. Yeah. So yeah, kids could definitely help you. Yeah. So I think people will like it. It's a good option for uh, for Christmas. And it's attractive, so if you want to take it somewhere. Yeah, that's true. You could take it for gifts. You talked about maybe I should take some to work. Yeah. And I said no. <laughs> but you might get to eat one at work. <laughs> yeah, well, you know how I feel about yeah. taking car keto food to... Pools before swine. To, to, car to carbies. <laughs> but it's just me. Uh, good job, babe. I think people will like this. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us again tonight, you guys. We hope that you enjoy the cookies as much as our family is going to. And we will probably be setting some out for Santa because, you know, we like Santa chubby, but he still could Im improve his, you know, overall fat intake. We hope that you are enjoying our seasonal series. We would like you to consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you do not miss out on the further three recipes that we have coming out with this theme for the month of December. We are also on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, and that's CJ's Keto Kitchen. Also, if you need this recipe, all the macros, the full recipe ingredients, most of our recipes are printable. That can always be found on our blog, and that is cjsketokitchen.com. We also have a playlist of other seasonal favorites that we have made this year and also in years past in keeping with the ketogenic lifestyle. So definitely head on over there and check it out. And we hope to see you again next week when we have another fabulous recipe. And until then, we'll see you next time on CJ's Keto Kitchen. Bye.